what's going on guys comes here back again on another MLB the show 19 diamond dynasty video today I want to talk about how you guys can build a really really good team an insanely good team for pretty cheap so today we are going to be talking about that up in the top right hand corner I will leave links to my favorite ways to make stones and earn and grind XP in the game because as I mentioned 40,000 times seemingly this year alone XP is the path to some of the best cards in the game whether whether it be like uh, Clayton Kershaw right here, Ichiro, two guys that I really, really like, or at least max overall signature diamonds that are really good as well. That is the best way to get some of the best cards. And of course, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to put any steps in the game. It does take time, but if you grind XP the ways that I do mention, it should be a little bit quicker. The first thing that I quickly want to get out of the way, I don't want to spend too much time on this, is there are good cards within moments. I'm going to spotlight the ones that I think are worth your time. I definitely think this is a must even if you have like a 95 overall team this Ken Griffey Jr. is really really good these moments are not that difficult I did not find there is one multi-game moment but other than that um, I really did not have too much trouble with this moment set the Ken Griffey Jr. card the 89 I will show you guys the stats right now he is so good he's one of my favorite cards that I well I wouldn't say one of my favorite cards but at least one of my favorite cards that I've gotten from the moment challenges you guys see his stats right here 95 and 90 power 72 66 contact 64 vision it's a little bit low but he still has really good defense at 84 fielding and 89 arm and of course you guys know there's really nothing sweeter than a ken griffey jr swing um in real life or within diamond dynasty so that's what i would really recommend otherwise the storylines for the cards alone none of them are really worth it the babe ruth is or um the willie mays or the harper so i would skip over that um, otherwise, for the Sony partners, I think this Wayno is without question worth it. I, I haven't quite finished it yet, but I've heard a lot of good things. And it's a free 95 signature. I definitely think this uh, Nick Senzel is worth you guys going for as well. He's a utility guy with good speed, good contact, and about 60s power as well, and good defense. Um, and he can play pretty much everywhere, so that's something really good to have on your bench. This Chris Davis, a righty killer, has about maxed out power, 122 power versus righties definitely recommend pick him up for the squad I have him and uh, Nick Senzel on my bench two really useful guys other than that I don't think you have to get this Ken Griffey Jr. because you're going to get the better one regardless and then this Cliff Lee sucks not a big fan of the Cliff Lee really at all other than that, they are they have like the uh, fourth inning, the third inning programs, and so on and so forth. Those are obviously worth it. Always recommend go ahead and get the moments done. We are going to see a new moment set drop on the second, so within a couple days. I believe the second is on a Tuesday. If you guys look on the calendar right over here, um, we are going to see new fourth inning content, so definitely make sure to do that. And then finally, the other obvious thing that I do want to quickly bring forward to you guys is make sure that you guys are grinding this event. Um, um, once you get to nine vouchers, you get a free 97 overall Omar Vizquel. Who I think is a really, really good shortstop. I'm grinding for it right now. And then you also get this 94 Hafner. The best thing, even if you don't want either of these cards, you can go ahead and sell them. This Hafner, really good power, uh, really good splits versus righties, rather, 105 and 106. Then against lefties, also 86 contact, 87 power, 90 vision. Drop off, of course, is the fielding, only at 50. That's kind of tough, but you know, you never really know until you try them out. You don't like them, you can sell them. This first count looks really, really good. He's going to be my new starter starting shortstop. 104 and 91 contact, really good, plus 123, pretty much maxed out vision. 56 power, it's decent. It's good enough to hit the ball hit the ball pretty hard, stroke it into the gap. He's a switch hitter, maxed out bunting, 98 fielding, 88 arm, 95 reaction, and about 90 speed and 90 stealing. That Omar Vizquel looks really, really nice. Highly recommend, 10 out of 10 recommend that you guys grind that event. But now I want to talk about cards that you guys can pick up for cheap on the market. So... Of course, you guys know that Guaranteed Signature Pack recently dropped, and it mixed a lot of things up within the market. Of course, the signatures that came out aren't going for that much, especially the base tier where you can find some gems, and then also pretty much every other card dropped in price. So I'm going to go over some players that I really recommend that you guys try out. The first one especially is a left fielder who can play a couple different spots. It's this Alex Gordon right here. He 
can play third base and corner outfield. I have done tremendous with him. I'm hitting 307, but I have a 627 slug OPS of almost 1,007 home runs within 75 at-bats, despite only having 78 and 76 power. If you put him at third like I am doing, he'll still have gold fielding, but 97 arm is really cheese. It's really, really nice to have out at third base. You're just going to gun guys down all day. 66 speed is also nice. Of course, he, you know, primary is a left field. There. Um, and he's one of the best that you're going to find right there. Good contact and set about 80 vision as well. For about 35,000 stubs, I really, uh, yeah, cannot recommend this card enough. I think he's a very, very solid guy that you would want. Um, some other players that I would really recommend that I have tried. This Tatis did pretty damn well for me within the time that I had him. His stats, once again, just like Alex Gordon, don't blow you away. He has good defense at gold defense, 87 arm, 84 fielding, and then 85 speed, which definitely shows 84, 75 contact, and, you know, mid-70s, low 80s power, and 57 vision. I hit 303 with him. I had an OPS of 879 through about 145 at bats to use him quite extensively, but that speed is really helpful. It really was a catalyst to me in a lot of different, um, a lot of different areas that really came up big. And then, of course, he has good defense at shortstop as well. So just a nice hybrid five-tool player that you're going to find right there with Fernando Tatis. Looking for other guys that I would really, really recommend that I've tried. This Aubrey Huff. Um, I only used him for 10 at-bats, um, but I hit four home runs. I'm just going to keep... I'm tired of moving it every damn time. Um, 10 at-bats, he hit four home runs. Um, so he hits. He strokes the ball really nice. Great lefty swing. And you can pick him up for 10 less than... 10,000 stubs really good option right there of course his fielding is kind of low but if you put him at first base he's only gonna have or he's going to go down to 55 fielding which is pretty much Frank Thomas asking he's gonna have about the same build um so I think he's gonna do pretty comparable to Frank Thomas over at first some second basements that I would recommend this Brandon Phillips did pretty decent in the short time that I did use him I've heard really good things about this dust or I guess it doesn't Petroy isn't exactly that cheap um first base is a place where i know there's tons of players this keith hernandez people sleep on this card so much if you guys don't have frank thomas go out and get you keith hernandez right now he goes for less than twenty thousand stubs 62 speed is about the best you're gonna find at first base except for like cody ballinger the best defense literally the best defense you'll find at first base better than don matting the 94 fielding 83 reaction Pretty much maxed out vision, 117, not quite maxed up, but really good. 114, 110 contact, 70 power per side. He looks so damn good. A great lefty bat, can do everything at first base. He looks like Wade Boggs if you put him at first, but, you know, made him even better, you know, on defense, and he has more power. This card cannot recommend enough. Another first baseman that you can look at, and this Jimmy Fosk uh, can also play a couple different places. He actually was a sneakingly good catcher for me. 102, 125 contact, about 80, 85 power, close to 90 vision. 70 fielding is going to be 65 if you put him at catcher, but I noticed no issues. You guys know I used to rock Joe Torre. I put Jimmy Fox at catcher. It was the same thing. I did not notice any different any difference and then 66 speed as well going for about 25,000 stubs very very nice Tavis Hafner also going for 10k first baseman you can find so many cheap options this Will Clark if you guys are really on a budget he has 86 93 contact 95 power versus righties and 70 fielding 70 reaction about 60 speed very nice option once again right there a great catcher that just released is this Russell Martin I'm using him right now very solid does it all about 65 speed very rare at catcher that you're going to find that 85 fielding 90 arm strength 88 blocking um about 85 contact per side 80 plus power per side 93 vision very solid going for just over 20,000. joe torrey is another one you guys know i use this card for so long and i think he's really solid again close to 50 speed 95 84 contact 80 93 power versus lefties and 93 vision these two are great catchers some of the best catchers that i've used 
used in the game. Russell Martin and Joe Torre, and they're going to run you 15 and 20,000 stubs. On to some pitchers that I've noticed that I've personally done really well with. I think this Greg Holland is really nice. Um, you know, 104 hit 9, 115 K9, 68 walk 9. Um, his, he only has three pitches, but he throws a fastball about 99 miles per hour, and that splitter is really nice. It's pretty much a changeup on steroids, I like to call it. Great pitch. This Fernando Rodney, I've heard great things about this year. That circle changeup really mixes it up. About a 13, 14 mile per hour differential. Really gets a lot of people off guard and a nice 95 break on that slider. Uh, 107 hit 9, 85 K9 Fernando Rodney goes for about 10,000 as well. Really nice. Um, looking for some other guys. I know a reliever that a lot of people love. This is Ken Giles, 100 miles Giles. Um, 109 K9, 95 hit 9, 66 walk 9, about 90 home runs per 9. He throws the ball so hard. He is really tough to hit. I have not used him myself, but he's given me plenty of fits when I have had to face him. So he's somebody I would definitely recommend. And another reliever is this Johnny Ventures. He is one of the toughest pitchers that I've had to face, at least relievers. Um, he has such a good picks, Mitch, um, such a good pitch mix, rather. Um, that sinker and slurve and fastball combination mixing in the changeup works really well. Throws hard at about 97 miles per hour. Um, and he has great uh, stats as well for an 81 overall, 93 hit nine and 94 K nine. And he's gonna only run you about 3,000 stubs. Some starters that I have used, a lot of people love this Roy Oswald. Well, he is really good. Really recommend it. He's kind of Kershaw asking the fact that he throws a fastball about 96 miles per hour. And then that 12-6 only goes about 70. So really catches people off guard. 91 K9 gets a lot of swings and misses, I have noticed. This Felix Hernandez, I use for quite some time. Great pitcher once again. Really good pitch repertoire. Um, really could not say enough about him. For an 88 overall, going for about a little over 5,000 stubs. Really solid option right there. Some other guys have noticed is I like uh, I like this Francisco Liriano in past years. And I think uh, I faced him a couple times and he does pretty well against me usually. So he's somebody I would recommend once again. There is so many cheap options that you can really find in this game. I'm looking for possibly a few more that I might have missed. Ballinger's great. He, of course, goes for about 20,000 stubs. However, um, for center fielders, there's got to be at least one. One more that I missed here somewhere that I was going to talk about. Um, I believe it was George Springer. That's what I was going to talk about. George Springer is insane. I cannot. This card is so damn good. At first, I thought he'd have troubles uh, defensively. I really haven't had problems with him putting him in center field. Of course, you guys know the rule for secondaries. You get minus five. Only put him at center field. If you move him to left or right field, he's going to drop down to common defense. Don't want that. But I'm slugging about 900. My OPS is close to 1400 with this George Springer. He's insane. Six home runs, less than 60 at bats, and then nine doubles as well. He kills it. And then also a 70 speed, always up on inside edge. Crazy good card right there. So that is some suggestions. I do want to say always make sure, find what works for you. I usually recommend to build your team around a certain play style. I think it's always good if you want to go for like a contact lineup, contact and speed. Have a couple power options because you guys know guys like Frank Thomas, he's going to get you runs quick. Yeah, I mean, Ichiro and Jose Reyes are great. They're going to get on base. They got speed. They can run for days, but you can run into issues. You can string hits together, but can you come up clutch when it matters the most? That's why I like to have a couple power options. So always make sure um, to do that. For your lineup, I always recommend have a good diversity. I have two switch hitters and I have four lefties. So it used to be the problem last year where I had a ton of righties. I literally have two righties in my lineup right now. It is very diverse. Um, usually you want to switch it up. So lefty switch, right switch. I do have two lefties in a row. Otherwise it's good. The reason you want to do that. So let's say if somebody were going to put in a lefty to face each or right here, then he's got a switch hitter and a righty and another switch hitter coming up. So you always want to throw him off guard. So you don't have like righty, 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 righty coming up. And then they'll just bring in a right hander. And it's a lot more likely that they're going to get you out. So 
Those are some tips that I can say to build a really, really good Diamond Dynasty team for cheap. There's a lot of great cards and moments, and there's a lot of really cheap cards that you guys can find out on the market. Let me know some of your guys' favorite budget cards, some of your favorite cards that you guys have used down below in the comment section and help each other build out your teams. And let me know what your favorite player so far in Diamond Dynasty has been. You guys already know mine's definitely Ichiro Suzuki. Uh, but yeah, if you guys didn't enjoy this video, make sure to like, down below. Hope you guys are great today. There goes Mazzaudi.